towards all sorts I get floored but force I endorse Any source is near but force in these parts Yo, yo, me some beers, I'ma go with these odds Till I see stars, till I be me Large stream, three yards, till you see me Acting like a retard Hey guys, welcome back to Bosch Gaming uh, I'm your host Chris Today we're just going to do a bit of a, a how-to video for you. some of you guys out there who aren't sure or have never put in a CPU in a, in a CPU socket before and installed um, even a stock or a basic aftermarket CPU cooler. So today we're going to be covering that. We've got what I did an unboxing on uh, with the last video. <coughs> it's our ASRock B75 Pro 3M board. Very basic board. We're doing a budget build here. Um, I've got my i3. Uh, 3220 that I'm going to be installing into it um, and we're using an aftermarket CPU cooler despite the fact that we're not going to do any overclocking obviously because we're on the B75 platform and I don't have a K-series CPU um, but something you might want to look at anyway because these are extremely cheap and they're a lot better than the Intel stock cooler so it'll keep it a fair bit cooler and you'll probably find it'll be a bit quieter as well um, it still uses a, a PWM fan which means that it can ramp up and slow down as it needs to so if it gets hot it'll get a bit faster if it's running cool it'll it'll ramp down so it won't be as loud <coughs> so these I think you can pick up for about 20-25 bucks which is a bargain and definitely worthwhile uh, the motherboard here was seventy dollars and the uh, i3-3220 was about 125 bucks so you know we're talking about 230 bucks or, or thereabouts um, including the RAM that I've got but we won't include that for the time being um, so yeah, including the RAM, about 260 bucks I think it came to for this budget build. We've already got a graphics card, we're going to use a GTX 550 Ti, but I won't go into those details for you guys. It's just basically on the CPU and the CPU cooler. And also just on that, the CPU cooler that we're using uses the exact same mounting method um, as the stock CPU cooler that comes with any Intel CPU. Um, and if you're curious about other CPUs and everything, the basic principle of this is exactly the same. Okay, so it's it's quite literally just following directions um, and being sensible and delicate. So anyway, I'll zoom in so you can get a closer look at what we're going to do, and uh, hopefully it all goes well. Okay, so we've got a close up of the socket. Um, you want to start with obviously removing this, which is to protect all the pins. Um, on the 1155's the pins are actually in the socket rather than on the CPU. So we take that away nice and gently move that out of the way. Hold on to it if you want. I personally don't. And then obviously we want to get our CPU out of the box. Oh, I have that around the right way for you. And we're not using the stock CPU core. I'm sorry about doing this off camera, but we're not using the stock CPU cooler, but we still need the CPU. So we'll chuck the CPU cooler away and uh, get out the CPU. Sorry, I should have been better prepared for this. Okay, and they all pretty much come in the same sort of thing, sitting in their little plastic doovahickey. Anyway, we'll take this out. So, there we go. Just hold it by either end. Just be gentle with it, and uh, actually that's something I should point out, is that on here, you'll find the orientation of the CPU socket, I don't know if you can see that, I'll bring it in a little bit more, that little triangle there, and I'll hold the CPU out for you, if you can see that and it focuses, there's a triangle in the bottom left hand corner, that's what we're looking at, okay? It's pretty hard to put it in the wrong way, but still pay attention nonetheless because you can do a lot of damage otherwise. <coughs> so we'll flip that back up again, get that out of the way, and then all we want to do is just drop it in there gently, and then close it back up. So we put that underneath the, uh, the little screw that it sits underneath there, and then we push it down, if I can do it, I'm a little bit gumby, and then let it clamp under there. And that's our uh, CPU sitting in its socket nicely. And the next thing we want to do, I might zoom out a little bit for this. Um, if you're installing a, an aftermarket CPU cooler, most of the time you have to put on your own thermal grease. <coughs> so we're going to do just that. And 
this is the stuff we're using. It's not really good stuff or anything, nothing to get excited about, but this is what comes with the CPU cooler and it will do the job. And all you want to do, well people have their own methods, but I usually go by the grain of rice method, so put on a little bit of a dollop in the middle, that's probably a little bit much actually, but never mind. And when we install the CPU cooler, that'll push it down and spread it around. Anyway, while I've still got this on here, I'll show you. Yeah, on the CPU cooler, because this has been used before, we want to get rid of the thermal paste that's already sitting on there. Um, and the best way to do that is just to use some metho uh, and a microfiber cloth. And I haven't used any metho, but this is still sort of fresh. Bad example, actually. I probably should have used some metho. Taken my own advice. But yeah, get rid of that. That's not too bad. But yeah, metho will give it a, a much cleaner finish and it evaporates. So that's the idea for that. Okay. Now, then it just comes down to the very simple mounting method for this. And I say simple, then I'm probably going to make a mistake or something on camera just to make myself look stupid. Now, this is orientated for the LGA 775 socket, which is what we used it for. Um, and luckily, I don't really have to change anything around because uh, on this motherboard it actually comes with holes mounted for. Uh, so you can use a, a CPU cooler that was on your LGA 775 socket uh, on this board as well, which makes it handy. <coughs> And then it's just a matter of pushing all the things down, letting it clamp in. Should hear a click if I can get that one in. Yeah. Hopefully they're lined up properly. Which that one's not. I've got a stubborn one. So if we have a look on the other side. Yeah, so most of them are through, none of them are quite the way I made it through. Sorry, I'm taking this off camera so I can do that. In fact, you know what, I'll do another take. Okay, sorry about that guys, one of the pins was bent out in my uh, mounting thingamajig on the CPU cooler, which I'd obviously done when I took it out of the other computer. So it was a little bit harder to get in than all, but I assure you it's very easy doing it the first time so long as you haven't damaged anything before you decide to put it in, but yeah. So it's just a matter of applying pressure on either side and then that side and you'll hear the click and everything when it pops in and everything's all all good. But hopefully that helped despite the minor hiccup there. And uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.